Hello there, it's Rich here from Serious Cricket and today we're going to look at what to consider when you're purchasing this lot, your cricket shoes. We're back and we're talking cricket shoes. What are the things we've got to consider? I've got Neil with me. I'm going to ask him some questions on that. Sorry, Neil. Far away. Yeah. So what sort of things do we need to consider? I think if, there's a few things. Yeah. Um, important piece of equipment in your kit bag. Cricket, play for a while, you, you're going to be on your feet for a long time. Yeah. So, uh, first and foremost, cost, yeah. budget, that always comes to mind. Cricket shoes are going to vary from £25 to £125. Um, level of cricket played? Yes. Um, are you playing just once a week for your school? Are you playing adult club cricket? Are you playing all of that and district and representative cricket? So if you're playing three, four, five times a week, your needs are going to probably be slightly different to if you're just playing once a week. Yeah. Um, we've got lots of different roles in the game, so we're going to talk about that uh, in a moment. But before we get into that nitty gritty, we've got a few little thoughts for you. Mm sizes, widths of shoes, they all come up a bit different. We've got a bit of a thought on that? Yeah, I think before before we get into shoe specifics um, as to who does what and why yeah. it's good, um, sizing wise, you're going to start, Greek shoes come from size one all the way up to, to sort of 13. Um, your juniors are really size one to six, so then you start to get into size seven and upwards is classed as an adult shoe, which is then incurs VAT. So yeah. from a, from a, a um, purchasing point of view you've got something there to suit everybody um, specifically you'll find that Adidas and New Balance come up slightly smaller so you might want to allow perhaps half a size um, when, when considering that if you're unsure if you're normally a size 9 though you're probably going to stick to to a size 9 okay um, so the Netflix next little thought is we've got some different varieties here so straight away I'm looking we've got uh, a rubber soled shoe and we've obviously got some spike shoes as well. Here we go. And yeah, and we, we have other, other options as well. Yeah, options. so so other than a, a rubber soled shoe, which is perfect for um, indoor use on AstroTurf floors, yeah. um, at our, here at our indoor cricket centre we've got Astro, so that's, so that's perfect for that. Yeah. I wouldn't advise purchasing those to use it in a normal sports hall floor because yeah. you, they're a bit skiddy and you slide on those. Yeah. Um, but they are good for Astros or outside Astros. Um, sometimes at club pitches they don't always have grass wickets so suitable for that. Yeah. Um, then you're into, majority of cricket shoes you'll find come with spikes um, and pretty much all shoes have the opportunity to put spikes throughout. So front, back, a full set of spikes. Yeah, and also you can put some rubbers in as well, some rubber spikes, should you play on some AstroTurf wickets outside. Yeah. You can do that too. So what you might find is as a bowler, you probably end up with a full spike. Yeah. Um, batters historically tend to put rubbers, spikes in the back and spikes at the front, yeah. uh, more of a half and half approach. Um, we can keepers used to do similar things, they want to be on the balls of their feet a little bit more. Yeah, and in the field you probably don't want all the spikes in the ground because you want to be able to set off quite quickly. So things to consider when you're when you're certainly buying, but all of them will come with a full spike option. Um, I think as a batter or a fielder, personally I quite like a half and half. Okay. I just have that yeah. feeling of getting out of the traps a bit quicker. <laughs> I was a full spike, I needed all the help I could get. <laughs> I um, still do. Talking about one, one thing that does help. Yes. Wear a pair of, good pair of socks with them. Yeah. Um, cricket socks you can purchase, they're just that little bit thicker, give you a bit more comfort when you're wearing your shoes. Um, what, one, one thing you'll find, they often come in a grey or a cream colour. Yes. Rich. Go on, why do they come in that grey or cream? I thought you'd ask that. So historically obviously we wear white and yeah. cricket's associated with white. You never really get find many white pairs of cricket socks because in most cricket clubs they won't let you wear the spikes. You have to take your shoes off because they don't want spikes through the pavilion. And so you don't want to be wearing a white pair of socks when you're walking around just in your socks. Hence why most of them are grey or cream. Oh. But good tip, get a good pair of cricket socks with your 
with whatever shoes you buy. Yeah, just adds to the comfort level. Yeah, one of the other one of the other things we get asked a lot too, isn't it? Because back in my day, we used to have the old steel toe caps. So you could stick your front foot down the wicket. The DRS was obviously not around. Stick your front foot down the wicket. Oh, no, no LBWs, no painful toes. Yeah, and likewise for the bowlers, they often, if they're, when they're dragging, oh, the their, dragging their back foot, it, it gave you that, in theory, extra level of protection. Um, you won't find that now. We, we, we don't get any no, shoes don't. that come with big steel toe caps, but what they all come with yeah. is some reinforced... Um, ends here in the toes yeah, the so that toes, you've got your protection still in there but what everybody wants now is a lightweight shoe that's you know really comfortable you don't want heavy clunky things that you're walking around in so yeah. nearly all shoes are much more trainer like but with reinforced protection cool we'll get into the nitty gritty Right, we've got different types of cricketers. We've got batters, we've got bowlers, we've got keepers, we've got fielders. But probably the most important place to start with shoes is going to be our quicker bowlers, the big lads and lasses. Yeah, you often get the most differences in a, a fast bowling shoe as we as we know it. Yeah. Um, that's probably also the most important for the fast bowlers. Really, after a lot more support, particularly in the ankles, yeah. uh, there's a lot of pressure and power going through the bowling action at the point of delivery. Um, so let's take a look at a, a couple of bowling shoes. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we've got a couple here, haven't we? and you've got uh, you've got a strap on two, and we haven't on one, but we've got something else on that other one. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Well, taking the straps, what you'll find in in bowling shoes, um, you're still going to have the laces that are going to go all the way throughout. So you're going to tie those up as normal. Yeah. Um, what the strap's going to do is just going to really lock the ankle um, into the shoe, just giving that extra support in and around. Um, that part of the foot yeah so that when you're in delivery you've really got as much you feel as supported as you can um and that's really the the benefits of, of, of locking that in with a strap the painter shoe's got one there it has and the slight difference is here is that we've got um we've got the boa constrictor squeezes it up nice and tight careful of your feet there on the way through um so that squeezes you in rather than put an ankle um, sort of lock on with the strap we've got a bit more of a squeeze there yeah we? so three differences you've got a much wider thicker strap in the painter shoe than the, than yeah. the new balance this feels maybe slightly lighter than than that though yeah um, and then how does that technology work then the, the so boa it's got yeah boa constrictor it. yeah it's got um, it's got some some wires and some uh, around the outside and what that does is it squeezes it all together by the little turning motion oh. here so it gets tighter and tighter and it kind of clamps that foot in place so again it's you know if you need specific um, support in a certain area through the ankle maybe a bit more through the middle of the foot you've got options to, to cope there um, one thing I'm noticing here is is you know there's a lot of height in these shoes mm. and a lot of lot of ankle support so obviously when that force hits the floor you get quite a lot of um, you get you get some extra support and some help there plus you've got the the old sturdy toes and here they're quite well reinforced on particularly I'm really struggling to move that one here and I can see that I've got a reinforced rubberized toe here so if you drag a little bit likewise you've got the similar thing on the on the new balance shoe and definitely recommend a full set of spikes and yeah, as a bowler definitely as you're heading through that crease yeah So the batters are going to be in the field all day, but hopefully they're going to be at the crease too. So we've got some uh, we've got some shoes and some examples here for them. Um, right, let's we talk through. Yeah, I think less paraphernalia here than the, the bowling boots. <laughs> yeah. um, we're looking for probably comfort, lightness. Yeah. Um, what have you got there? You've so got I've got a nice Adidas number, 22 yards. Um, it is it is very light. It's well structured at the bottom, but. It's it's a decent shoe. Again, it doesn't have quite so much structure here in the in the toe, but you know it's got a little bit of structure here. Um, again, you're dead right with lights. Feels so much different. My arms mm. feel a lot lighter. Um, I've got the new um, New Balance CK tens. Yeah. Um, first of all, very much almost like a New Balance trainer. It is, isn't it? Um, you know, built for comfort, built for speed. Pretty lightweight. Yeah. Um, or we've got the painter one two fours. Yeah. Again, another good batting shoe. Just not, comfortable uh, not, to not too much to choose between these. To be honest, they're both they're both 
I'd say the painted ones are actually slightly lighter, if yeah. anything. Um, but good all round batting shoes, only going to serve you well in the field, too. Yeah. So we've had a look at for our batters, we've had a little look at our, our fast bowlers. Um, we need something in the in the middle, a bit of a happy medium, as they say. Well, I'd say, you know, we've looked at the highly technical side of shoes. The majority of people purchasing yeah. are going to be looking for a good all-round shoe that they can bat in, bowl in, feel comfortable in. Yeah. Um, I think first point is, if you're able to, head in store somewhere yes. because you can try them on and feel them. But yeah. if you can't and you're buying online, uh, things to consider other than the price point is you know most most manufacturers will offer a good cricket shoe yeah um, we've got gun and more and we've got we've got some gun and more options here so we're starting to talk about our cricket company options gun and more we've got we move into the kookaburra range as well uh, we've got a we've got some gray nickel shoes and that's going to be sort of quite entry level and a little bit beyond that as well um, plus we've got the exciting versions in the sort of the, the batting and the bowling versions here of the how's that um, we've got the new balance we've got some of the painter versions as well that are, they'll also have a mid-range point there with a batting shoe and a you know sorry an all-rounder shoe apologies yeah. I think I think unless you're specifically looking for a bowling shoe then the majority of shoes are going to work in for area. you as a batter or a fielder so don't get too caught up in any of the technological advances unless you're specifically looking for a bowling shoe yeah. everything else is going to work for you it's then a case of comfort price and probably the making uh, sure it fits making sure it fits yeah it's, it's key it is, isn't it? <laughs> okay now we better put together a little summary for everybody so what are the things to consider so I think key things to consider when you're buying your footwear for the season Cost is going to play an element, yeah. but that should be dictated by how much cricket are you playing. Yeah. Um, definitely would say it's worth spending a little bit more money on your footwear than you maybe consider, purely because you're going to be wearing them for a long period long of time. Period of time. Yeah. Um, unless you're specifically looking for a bowling shoe, don't get too caught up in the specifics of it because there will be a shoe that is comfortable for everyone. Yeah. Um, make sure they fit. And don't forget a good pair of cricket socks. That, oh, that, yeah. that adds tip. to the comfort. It does, doesn't it? Okay, so if you liked the video, please give us a little thumbs up. If you've got any comments, stick it below. Do subscribe, we've got more videos coming out. And thanks for watching. <laughs>